Hey kids, yeah, welcome to our last um, video of the unit 3a. Um, we're going to talk about derivatives of our six trig functions. So excuse some of the bumpiness maybe and weird noises. I am traveling in a car. <laughs> um, Mr. Getz is driving and I am not recording a zoom. I mean recording a video while I am driving. I am not that talented. Um, so I want to, here's the curve of sine theta or sine x, so however you want to think about it, going from negative pi, right, negative 3.14-ish, all the way to 3.414-ish. And if you think about what we just did in the previous video and what we've done before about estimating tangents, right, here at pi over 2, I think you're okay with the fact that there is a horizontal tangent there. So the graph of the derivative of sine would have an x-intercept at pi over 2, negative pi over 2, and positive pi over 2. At 0, I want you to look at the tangent line there. And if you can believe, right, would you believe a good estimate of that would be positive 1. And here, a tangent line here at negative pi, a good estimate might be negative 1. And also here at pi a good estimate of a tangent line that I would draw there might be negative 1. So if I want to make a graph of the slopes of sine x, which is the derivative, right, I could make a table and I could generate a list, right, and I could say, hey, there at negative pi, I think the slope of the tangent would be negative 1. And do so you see that dot right here? There is a dot on the derivative graph. At negative pi, the derivative on sine looks to be about negative 1. At negative pi over 2, the slope of sine is definitely 0. Notice that the sine of negative pi over 2 is negative 1, right? But the slope on sine at negative pi over 2 is 0. And then at 0, I'm asking you to believe that a good estimate would be 1. At positive pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 is positive 1, but the slope on sine at pi over 2 is 0. So again, I'm plotting that point. Then at negative pi, I'm sorry, at positive pi, sine of pi is 0, but the slope of sine looks to be about negative 1. So there are some discrete right, points that I've drawn. And then if I connect the dots and use my uh, knowledge about the graphs of derivatives, well, these tangent lines are negative, but getting less and less negative if I approach zero, and then the tangent lines are positive, right? Looks to be about one here, then they're starting to come back down to zero, right? And if I connect those graphs, well, I mean, those points, look at the curve I get. I mean, what? I mean, you might think a lot of math is weird or can't understand, you know, whatever, but I mean, Think about this for a second. The slopes on sine are described by cosine. What? What? Do you think this looks like Mr. Getz, right? right? His hair did fly off. He wears glasses now. <laughs> That's freaking nuts. And it is, in fact, true that the slope generator the slope generator, the derivative with respect to x or respect to theta or respect to t, whatever, of the sine function is, is, is cosine. What? I mean, that is just insanity. I mean, really, math is pretty freaking cool. I mean, do you think math was invented or was it just discovered? I mean, this is pretty freaking cool. Now, if you have your calculator, please go get it. Now, you could skip past this part. You could ignore me. You could just watch it and not do it yourself. But I promise you these keystrokes are going to come in handy for you. So I think it's worth your time to go get it to in Y1, put sine X. Please make sure you're in, in radian. Sometimes those physics teachers make you go in degrees. But calculus works in radians. I had a kid once that came back to me after the AP exam and said, oh my God, Ms. Getz, I just realized I took the whole test in degrees and not radians. Now, that doesn't mean he would fail it. You're not going to fail. It's not a radians or a trig test. 
but it definitely cost him some points and probably cost him some time because his math probably got ugly or it didn't even work in some places. Don't do that. You have to be in radians. Now, into, now notice I turned that equation off. If you don't know how to do that, you take your cursor, make your cursor blink on the equal sign, hit enter, and then move off. And it just means the equation is turned off. This notation is the old notation, so I wanted to put it up here. If you type, if you have the old software and you hit math, not math 8, it comes up n deriv. But you want to take the numerical derivative. You want to put y1, comma, with respect to x, comma, for all x in the window. If you have the newer software, you have this, right? It says d, and then you have to put the x there and then you put y1 there, and then you say for all x. And if you turn that equation on and then hit zoom 9, no, 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 sorry, hit zoom 7, which is a trig window, negative 2 pi to 2 pi, you will have, the calculator will graph the derivative of what you have in sine 1 at every pixel in the window, and you will see cosine of x. Knowing how to make the calculator graph a derivative for you is a handy tool. It's a handy time-saving tool when you have your calculator, which you will for 50% of the test, for the AP test. Isn't that cool? Well, then what do you think is going to be true about cosine? What if I want the slopes on cosine? I would do the same thing, right? I'd pick convenient places and I'd say, hey, at negative pi, cosine has a slope of zero. At negative pi over 2, that looks like a slope of positive 1. At 0, the cosine of 0 is 1, but the slope on the cosine curve is 0. At pi over 2, that looks like negative 1. The tangent line looks like negative 1. So I'm just plotting these points. And at pi, looks again like 0. So when I do the same thing, I, I plotted a couple of discrete points and then I connect it with a smooth, smooth, smooth curve. It is a sine curve, isn't it? But it's what? <gasps> Upside down sine, right? <laughs> so how do you write that? The slopes on cosine are described by negative sine. I mean, I mean, it's just nuts, right? Math is cool. Now, remember when I taught you unit circle and I said, and I taught you, um, right, your six trig functions. And I said, if you know sine and cosine really well, you've got all the others. Well, it's the same for the derivatives, right? Because if you think about it, every other, all other four trig functions are defined in terms of sine and cosine, right? So tangent, oh, I forgot I did this. Here is, here's the nice thing about um, Using y1, notice I just changed sine x to cosine x. And then I don't have to change what's in y2. And now when you hit graph, don't forget to turn off y1 again, you'll see negative sine. Sorry. So tangent is defined to be the ratio of sine to cosine. So the derivative of tangent is the derivative of a quotient, which means I have to use the quotient rule. But the quotient rule never changes, does it? This is pi over ho. So the derivative is ho times the derivative of hi minus hi times the derivative of ho, and we just learned the derivative of sine and cosine, and this is all over ho squared, right? But look what happens in that numerator. Cosine squared minus negative sine squared is cosine squared plus sine squared. Hello, Pythagoras. Hello, unit circle. Unit circle with a radius of what? Cosine squared plus sine squared equals what? One. And one over cosine squared has another name now, doesn't it? The derivative 
of tangents. The derivative of tangent is secant squared by the quotient rule. Pretty cool, huh? I could do the same thing with cotangent, right? Cotangent is defined to be cosine over sine. I would do the quotient rule. Can you take a guess at what I would end up with? It's not secant squared. Guess what it is, though? Yep. The derivative of tangent is secant squared, but the derivative of cotangent is cosecant squared, just negatized. I could also find the derivative of secant because secant is 1 over cosine. I would use the quotient rule on that and I would end up with this product. Try it if you want. It's not that hard, right? You have to take the derivative of a quotient, 1 over cosine. You have to use the quotient rule on that and then do a little rewrite with your trig and you will end up with a product which is a little bit of a dagger if I need to do the second derivative because the second derivative of secant would be taking the derivative of this product, which means the product rule. But notice the derivative of secant is itself multiplied times tangent. So trig is pretty cool and pretty secular. Secular? No, that's not what I mean. There's a lot of patterns going on. The derivative of cosecant is also a product, and it is a product of itself, and not tangent, but cotangent, but negatized. So here's all six of them. Right? Notice that secant and cosecant, their derivatives are products. I mean, technically, so is cotangent and tangent. They're products, right? But they're squared, right? So it's a product of cosecant times cosecant and then negatized. The derivative of tangent is secant times secant and not negatized. Speaking of negatizing, hey, check this little cool pattern out. Look at that. The derivative of cosine is negative. The derivative of cotangent is negative. The derivative of cosecant is negative. All the, of the three cosine, I'm sorry, of the three trig relationships that start with C, their derivatives are all negatized. All right, so a lot of cool patterns going on. So let's do a quick example. I want you to write an equation of a tangent line. So here's what I do. Somebody says they want the equation of a tangent line. Here's what I write. And again, you can put the y coordinate on the other side over there with a the y, that's fine. So they want equation lines. I'm giving them equations of lines. In here, I need to go to the original and put the x, the x coordinate of the point of tangency. This is why you want to know your unit circle values, right? Here's the original y. The sine of 0 is 0. The sine of pi over 6 is a half. The sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. Then I need the derivative, the slope. So in here is y prime of 0.
So I need to go here and say, what is y prime? The derivative of sine is cosine. The cosine of zero is one. The cosine of pi over six is root three over two. The cosine of pi over three is a half. And then clean those equations up if you want. Certainly this one is just y equals x, right? I'm not gonna bother to clean those ones up. But think about the graph of sine. Is it believable that the equation of the tangent line at 0, 0 is y equals 1x? That's kind of cool. Is it believable that at pi over 6, the tangent line has a positive slope? Root 3 over 2 is like, right? Root 3 is like 1.7-ish over 2. But at pi over three, the slope is a half, right? Kind of cool. So at, in our live session, we'll do some more examples um, and some practice problems with these trig derivatives. And that is what your uh, book homework is on, finding derivatives of using the trig derivatives and sometimes finding this you know, first and second derivatives, right? So you're gonna have to maybe use the product rule in some of those and writing equations of tangent lines. All right, I will see you then. Take care.